Ready? In. Nice break. What do you think? I'm pretty good at pool. <laughs> you are pretty good at pool. Uh, not bad. Um, uh, so, I was going to tell you, I, I was watching this video um, on YouTube the other day about these people, they bought a CNC machine and for whatever reasons they could not get it to work right for whatever they were doing. And I'm just curious, will that, will that happen to me? Oh, know. yeah. I saw that video. Um, it could happen to you, but we're going to make sure it doesn't. Um, in their case, they, they I, I saw they made like three different videos before they finally gave up on it. And, you know, what they said was they thought they picked the wrong machine for the job. And uh -huh. I, I think they were right, actually. I think they were just spot on. So I'm going to show you how to pick out a machine that's going to be perfect for your needs. You will not have those problems. Mm -hmm. And it'll fit your budget, too. That would be perfect. That would be, be a big help. Cool. Let's head out of here. All right. Welcome to CNC with Jamie. If you like the video so far, please click the like down below. That tells the YouTube algorithms it's a good video and it should be shown to more people. If you don't want to miss the next video, please click subscribe and the bell so you'll be notified whenever it's available. Hey Jamie, are you ready to pick a CNC machine? Yes. But how do I know how to pick the best one for me? Well, let's start by breaking it down into categories. Okay. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into categories based on what kind of work you can do and what kind of parts you can make and what it costs. Okay. Let's talk about the different kinds of CNC machine that you might use to start with. Um, I'm going to divide them into three categories based on budget and what they can do. The lowest price category, it's under $500, and for that category, you'll want to pick either a 3D printer or a laser engraver. Um, you can get a decent one that, that can produce real products uh, in that under $500 range. Now, the next uh, category above that in budget is uh, quite a bit more money, and that would be the CNC router or what I call a wood carving category. And you're gonna to need to have about $2,000 to be able to work in that category. Next one above that is precision metal work where you'll be looking at a CNC mill. And that's more money still, that's almost $6,500. And that's without anything else, you'll need to have more money to pay for your, your cutters and various other things that you're gonna need. But uh, my, my budget is really limited, so uh, which type of machine do you recommend? First, I will help you a little bit with the budget, so don't worry about having to be too cheap about it. I mean, you know, we are, we are going to be making these videos, and so it benefits CNC Cookbook. The thing is, you could start a business with any of these machines, <clears throat> but I think you should focus on the wood carving machines. In other words, Let's focus on CNC routers. Okay. And I like the CNC routers because uh, they're a little more general than lasers. Lasers only engrave at this kind of price point or they cut really thin wood. Uh, whereas a CNC router can do the engraving, but can, it can also carve softer materials. Thicker materials? Thicker materials, wood, plastic, even soft metal like aluminum and brass. Oh, nice. Um, they're pretty easy to learn and not too pricey, unlike some of the precision metalworking machines. Yeah. Um, uh, what can I make with a CNC router? Well, here, check it out. Uh, here are just a few cool things made with CNC routers. Uh, you can make signs of all kinds. Uh, containers and jewelry boxes, toys and games, furnitures, all sorts of things. Yeah, you've shown some uh, pretty good examples of what they can do. And uh, can I save money uh, if I, what if I build a machine myself or like a kit or is it cheaper to have it just assembled when you buy it? 
Well, when you get to looking at the prices on these machines, it is tempting to think that uh, do-it-yourself could save money. But here's the reality. You won't save a lot of money with do-it-yourself. You'd save a little bit. Let's say, I don't know, maybe 20%. It will take you, though, a lot longer to build a completely do-it-yourself machine. It might take years. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it took me a good two years to build mine, wow. and uh, it'll certainly take you many months. The thing is, if you're a beginner with no special skills to help you with do it yourself, uh, it's going to be very frustrating. And, and you know, some beginners don't even ever finish their do it yourself machine. Crazy. So, you need to just be asking yourself one simple question Are you more interested in learning how to build CNC machines? or in making products with a CNC machine. Unless the answer is that your number one priority is you want to learn how to build CNC machines. And by the way, that's pretty tough to turn that into a business. Yeah. You don't you don't want to do a do it yourself. Yeah, it seems complicated. So yeah, go for a kit or fully assembled. Um, most entry level and hobby machines will be kits which is another reason you can't save that much money over them is they've already got you putting your labor into it. Yeah. It's just a question of how well put together they are and how easy they are to assemble. Some more pro machines will arrive almost completely assembled. Okay, I get it. That makes sense. All right. So let's go down our list of the things to look for when choosing a machine to start a business. Awesome. And how do I know... I mean, I'm not, I know you're going to explain it, but I don't know if uh, the CNC machine is reliable and well-supported. Okay, that's our first major question. And it's, it's a matter of, of doing your homework. Uh, before you spend that much money in just writing a check to get one of these machines, yeah. get in your web browser and do your research. And uh, here's my checklist of what you want to be researching. So uh, you want to answer these kinds of questions, which, you know, are the best YouTube channels about the subject using the machine you're interested in or some, something else? If it's something else, if the very best channels are using something else, check out that machine. Yeah. Right? Um, check out the manufacturer's YouTube channel. Every good manufacturer should have a YouTube channel with lots of good training and information on it. Okay. Um, Go through the YouTube reviews of the machines that you're interested in. Uh, watch a whole bunch of those reviews, and as you're watching them, you know, are there many negatives in those reviews? Yeah, like pros and cons lists. Yeah, every machine should have a few negatives, uh, but does this particular machine have more than average? Uh, I would also make a list of the top three to five users or three to five YouTube channels for each machine you're interested in, okay. right? Because you're gonna wanna have those experts yeah. uh, available to Definitely. you. And uh, you know how many of them are doing projects right up your alley, right? I've gotten a lot of mileage out of choosing uh, products that are being used to do something similar to what I'm trying to do. Based on reviews on YouTube and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and how many of them are making money with their machines? Because a hobby machine, and the demands that are placed on it is a lot different from a machine that's helping you make a living. Okay. Um, find <laughs> people who had problems with their machines. Every single machine has problems. Oh, man. <laughs> they, they just do. And so what you want to do is find out, well, how did they resolve that problem? You know, it was, did the manufacturer or the ecosystem help them get through it? Did you find it in a forum or something? Yeah, check out the forums, check out YouTube. Specs, uh, reviews. <laughs> yeah, find all the find those problems because you want to see the bad with the good. Yeah. Now, uh, take your short list of machines that you're considering. I mean, let's say you narrowed it down to three to five, uh, and search for each one on YouTube and rank them by how many videos you find. Okay. Right, because the machine how that's. How many they put out? Yeah, okay. not just the manufacturer, but just in YouTube in general. And okay. go out on Google and do the same. Okay. You know, some some of these machines and products you may find there's there's actually very little available out there, and that's not helpful to a beginner. No. Right. <laughs> you want you want all the help you can get. That's why I came to you. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're gonna get a sense pretty fast of which machines are well known, reliable, and well supported. Yeah. Versus which ones are not. Um, also, check out CNC Cookbook's CNC Router Survey. You 
you know, I have to throw that little ad in there, but we survey our audience, which is huge, and we ask them which machines they use and how happy they are. And, uh, you know, pick one of the more popular machines to help guarantee a good support network. Okay. Um, the uh, results of our latest survey is available in our CNC router buyer's guide. Okay. That's also something you ought to get and go through. And I'll give a link to that uh, the e down below. Yeah, the ebook. Okay, if it's gonna be freaking Mount Everest, Rookie. that's gonna be a bummer. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a start is that prior step. Having a machine that's well supported will help minimize your learning curve, but there's a lot more to look into as well. Yeah. Um, you're looking for a broader support network than just what the company itself is doing. Yeah. And so you should have identified whether that broader network exists and how good it is. But there's another huge factor, and that's the software you're gonna use with the machine. It can take hundreds of hours to learn and use the software for your CNC router well enough to make the parts you wanna make. Yeah. Ouch, ouch, how am I gonna get through all that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna teach Scary. you the basics of the software to make it a lot easier. Good. Um, even better, we're gonna start out with some super easy software that'll get you started. What's super easy software? Because I haven't found any. <laughs> I know, well, some of the machines actually come with super easy software, and that's very cool. In fact, I really favor those machines that include software because it's such an important part of the learning experience. It's hard to call a machine easy without it having easy software. Right? But you got to learn the software first before you can do the other. And that's the point. You'll spend more time learning the software than you will learning the machine. And so, you know, that's why we've got to find the right combination of machine and software. Now, with a little creativity and some tricks that I'm gonna show you, that software can do some pretty powerful work even mm -hmm. though it is simple, often free software. Later on, we'll tackle the more complex software when you actually need it to tackle more complex products. And when I'm ready to that. <laughs> when you're ready to absorb it. Um, just don't underestimate the impact of that software because it also impacts your costs. Good CNC software can actually cost more than a CNC router. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Now I'm worried about how much it's going to cost to start it. <laughs> well, relax. We're going to get your business going without having to buy any additional software, right? You should be able to make enough money with your business to help you get to that next stage. Okay, cool. So I'll be I'll be still be able to eat. That's right. <laughs> You'll be able to eat. Uh, okay. Um, and as far as the machines, how do I know, um, I'm sure this goes into the cost too, how do I know if like, the CNC machine is powerful enough, but not too powerful? Because I want one that can do a lot, right? But I don't want one that's gonna put me in the hole or it's too much that I don't use. Oh no, we've got a cliffhanger. You'll get to hear ja the rest of Jamie's process for deciding on a CNC machine as well as which CNC machine she chooses in the next video. Stay tuned.